Welcome back. The National Institute for Communicable Diseases has reported 5,644 new coronavirus infections in South Africa over the last reporting 24-hour cycle. 235 more people have succumbed to COVID-19-related complications. That puts the death toll above 80,000 at 81,830. KwaZulu-Natal has the highest number of new infections at nearly 2,000, followed by the Eastern Cape with 931 cases and the Western Cape with just above 900. Gauteng recording uh, uh, nearly 350 new cases in the reporting cycle. The NRCD says active cases have decreased to below 155,000 with a recovery rate now standing at 91.5%. All right, well, there is concern about a new COVID-19 variant detected in South Africa. A new study by the National Institute for Communi uh, Communicable Diseases says the new variant has a concerning constellation of mutations. Now, some reports uh, around the world suggesting it not only spreads much faster than even the Delta variant that has wreaked havoc across the globe, but, but, but it may also be resistant to the vaccines that are being administered. To discuss, we're now joined by Dr. Catherine Skier who is Senior Medical Scientist at the Centre for HIV and STIs Virology Group. Thank you for being with us, Doctor. The, firstly, there are variants, variants of interest, variants are cons of concern. Just explain the status of C.1.2, uh, this new variant, right now. Thank you for having me on the show. So, um, all of these terminologies can be very confusing. So maybe I should take a step back and just explain what a variant is. So a variant is really just a different version of a virus. You can think of it much like a computer software that you have to upgrade every now and then to a different version, version 2.0, whatever that is. So viruses mutate all the time and we see different versions all the time. Now, terms like variants uh, under investigation variants of interest, variants of concern. These are just uh, ways that we classify these different variants. This is because, um, as I mentioned, these the virus mutates all the time and different variants pop up all the time. And so these different classifications are just ways for us to know how to respond to this virus, um, a level of, of um, concern that we should have. So the C12 lineage that we've reported is currently a variant under investigation. Now, this is the lowest level of classification that we have. And it really just means a variant under investigation means that we are in the scientific community. We are monitoring mm -hmm. it. In South Africa, this is the Network for Genomic Surveillance, um, and it involves a group of um, universities throughout the country, as well as the NICD and the NHLS. And what we do is we continuously monitor uh, the SARS coronavirus in South Africa and look to see if it's changing at all. Do we see different levels of um, detection of a particular virus? So, so our releasing this information and publishing it was just a way to notify the scientific community that we have seen this virus, we've detected it in South Africa, we notified um, other countries that we have seen it and um, detected in other countries. And really, it's just a way um, for the scientific community to continue to monitor it. OK, so so that's all uh, good and well, but it is making news uh, around the world. Um, and of course, it's been found in other countries, I, I believe, as well. So let's just look at some of the reports uh, that, that it may move as fast um, at twice as fast as the Delta variant that we know already moves pretty fast. Uh, is, is, do, we, do we know about transmissibility right now? So I think um, there has been, again, it, because some of the terminology that we use can be confusing. So when we talk about um, it being twice as fast, what we meant um, was that the rate that it took to accumulate the number of mutations that it has is much faster than what we had seen in other variants, not that it's spreading much faster. So there's a, there's a clear um, distinction between these two things. So this virus is highly mutated, and I'll, I'll talk about um, what we mean about highly mutated in a bit, but that doesn't necessarily transmit or translate to it being uh, highly transmissible. So it does share some mutations with other variants that we know are highly transmissible, like the Delta variant, 
but we don't yet know whether that is true for this particular virus, which is the reason why we're monitoring it. So if you, if you don't mind, I'd like to just talk about what um, it means to be hyper or highly mutated. Well, well let me first ask one. you, just, just for time, uh, Doctor, because the, this is also being reported that it may be resistant to vaccines. Mm. Is, is that a concern right now? So again, this is it shares a lot of mutations that we see in other variants of concern, like the beta, the lambda, and the delta that have been associated with reduced uh, antibody responses. So it's possible that this um, virus could also show reduced antibody responses, much like beta, delta, and lambda, but it, there is no evidence to suggest that it could be worse than any of those variants. We are currently working on um, understanding this in the lab. We're testing this in the lab and we hope to have the results soon that we'll be able to say whether yeah. indeed it does um, show reduced uh, antibody responses. But I do want to point out that we know that the vaccines, the, currently the ones that are being rolled out in South Africa, are very effective against death and hospitalizations even against these other variants, Delta and Beta. So we, we continue to urge people to continue to get vaccinated. It will likely still be as effective against the C12 as it has been to other variants. All right. So, so what you're saying is um, there's, there's a lot more that we need to know, but, but don't mm. be alarmed just, just yet. Yes. And, and finally, I mean, how many cases in South Africa does this variant account for? How many cases could it account for in future? So right now, it really accounts for about 2% or less than 2% of the viruses that we see them. The cases that we're seeing in South Africa really are predominated by the Delta virus. So that's really what has been driving the third wave um, in South Africa is Delta. We're detecting this at a very low frequency, which is the reason why we're saying don't be overly concerned about this. Um, there is no reason at this point to be, to be overly concerned. We're monitoring it just because it shares a lot of mutations with other variants. Um, but there, but it's so low right now that um, it doesn't warrant um, major concern from the public. It doesn't change your day-to-day -day kind of behavior. All right, and, and you did talk about the mutations and this constellation of, of mutations. Apparently, mm -hmm. it's, it may have mutated up to 59 times. So very quickly, um, uh, that makes it very different from the original virus. Uh, how alarming is that? Thanks. So, so viruses mutate all the time. And a lot of the time, these mutations that they accumulate don't have any added um, benefit to the virus. They actually don't do that much. Um, so while we see a lot of these mutations, some of them are concerning because we've seen them in other variants, and this is why we're monitoring it. But a lot of these new mutations may not uh, contribute to any additional um, either transmissibility or reduced um, uh, antibody levels. So in this case, more doesn't necessarily mean worse. All right, thank you. Uh, so, so just calming us all down there after reports of, of the new variant. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Catherine Skippers, okay. a senior medical scientist, Center for HIV and STIs Virology Group.